Yeah. Uh, exactly. If we have not putting mine on the iPad, it is on my iPad. Uh, and I talked about the scorpion. Just go like this, you're your regular. Oh,
those are, I guess, the two big questions. And then the happy, nice thing that I can do for you is invite you to cut the ribbon on May 27th. Is that a bribe? <laughs> if a bribe would work. Um, okay, any questions? Councilor uh, Schwarzberg. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think I know the answer to this, but the edible pathways is on the frontage before you go down the stairs to where the harvest hut would be? Is yeah, that um, so north of Triangle Park, uh, on the planters already placed in front of the businesses, uh, they'll be doing the dirt and vegetables. Great. Councilman Trump? So just to elaborate that on that a little bit, mm -hmm. it's we're going for a tomato sauce theme, isn't it? Like a pasta yeah. sauce theme? Um, so that we plant all the things in the planters in that part of town, if you wanted, you could wander around and collect, harvest yourself out of our planters as things become ripe. Yes, so the horticulturist, um, he's going to email me back on which plants um, he was able to find and sort of what he was thinking. Uh, but yeah, we loosely made a list. We want to go with a pasta sauce theme, and that'll be on our uh, print materials as well. Uh, so if you were to take those materials and read about the project, you'd get like a suggested recipe on the back. Any other questions? We need a motion to like staff for your insurance. And the location. Is there a proposed motion written for us already? I can say not that I'm aware of. Yes, uh, uh, Chair Grace, thank you. Um, no motion is prepared as yet. Uh, we wanted to update Council, because uh, you've heard from the Harvest Hut, uh, Julie mm -hmm. Forster, and um, part of the direction was wh where could it potentially be located. Um, right now, I believe it'll just be a table and uh, some kind of a tent protection you know, from the sun. Um, possibly in the next year or two, they may get a something to put things in, but that is mm -hmm. down the road. Um, so I thought I would bring uh, a report to council with um, a request for permission and um, the request for the insurance as well. Very similar to what we're doing with the Art Walk and the Christmas Light Up, that insurance program. So it works very well for um, our community agencies or groups, and um, it is a, a little bit less insurance cost for them. Council I don't have to make any motion that needs to be made. Yeah, but my question is just more around the placement of the food shelves. Because when Julie came originally, she was talking more about maybe trying to place it in the park somewhere. Um, I'm just wondering how the location of the parking lot was chosen. Um, so we really wanted to tie it into the edible pathways as well as like on existing Always, like, on the existing plans, like the downtown revitalization plan, so bringing people on Main Street. Um, then they can engage with both projects at once. Um, as well, like being in a parking lot, there's parking. And then, um, like because we want to engage with Main Street um, and the existing plans, um, you can come down from street level or come in through the back. And that was like a big part of it. Awesome. Um, is this something that will be put up and taken down next week? Uh, so um, ideally, uh, as part of our wish list, we would look for a garden shed. Uh, to store stuff, and then yeah, each week we would put up the tables and chairs and bring in about three volunteers. See you. Thank you, um, Chair Bryce. Today you could put forward a motion to provide permission. You don't really need a staff report to uh, provide permission for them to use the, the lot if you would like. Um, or the insurance. Um, well, the insurance you need, we need a formal resolution to go um, with the package to the insurance company. But um, you could authorize the use of the parking lot, a couple of stalls in the parking lot today if you'd like. Councilor I'd like to make the proposed motion that's up on the board then that council authorize the use of the portion of Main Street Town on lot parking lot to launch the Harvest Hut project. And then if necessary, we could add to that and to Oop. direct staff to prepare what you just described as far as the insurance uh, goes. Yeah. Uh, that's that report be brought forward. Time limits. Should there be time limits in there? Uh, 
Um, it'll come to the next meeting. No, I'm talking to the disclosure. Oh, for um, how long <coughs> they can use it? Do you want it? It says 2019 right there. In 2019. And it says May, May to September. So. Well, I'm also thinking that it's one day a week. It's 5.30 to 7.30. Like I, I don't want to be taking away parking during the day. I guess is my concern. And this is kind of a cart block. I think they, well, I'm sorry. My understanding is that if they do get a um, trailer that they're wanting anyway as part of the wish list to store items, that would be there permanently in that period and during those months, would it not? We hope so. Yeah. It'd just be like a garden shed, like right. just a big Still. enough thing to basically put some filing cabinets, uh, tables and chairs. Taking up a spot. Do you have um, time of day? Is that all sorted out already? So Monday is from 5.30 to 7.30. So we were thinking that we'd let our volunteers know that we'd set up at, say, 5 and take out and be done by 8. That's I assume that's PM, not AM. <laughs> yeah, PM. <laughs> not going to Diane. Uh -huh. AM or PM? PM, okay. <laughs> I had you there early in the morning. <laughs> Okay, we have a proposed motion. Do we have a second? Council Schwarzenberger. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Anna. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving <coughs> on to business and F new park design update. Director of Operations report is attached. I'll refer the end to the CAO. Thank you, Your Worship. Our <laughs> Councilor Grice. I will um, forward this over to Sean Goodsell and uh, our Director of Operations to uh, present to Council. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, could you? We're just going to bring the design up on there. It's a little bit larger. So it was this report was just a um, basically make a couple a couple more decisions and then we can get on with the park um, and just to show and update council the changes that we made to date so maybe I'll, I'll touch on those and then we can touch on the options I'm putting forward to council um, we've completed most of the design um, we're probably going to start filling the park May June depending on our schedules so we'll start bringing in um, in soil and uh, materials to bring the level of bring the level of the park up where we think it would work better and um, and then we want to tender in May here hopefully as early as we can once we make make these decisions um, so attached to council's agenda is the new park design that we've tweaked over the last few months to incorporate some of the feedback we received at the open house um, in December last year and um, to make the basically to make the park work a little bit better um, so staff had a little bit of input too and uh, we tweaked a few things and we, we've taken taken account some of the comments from the public even though they're from left to right in two different directions we're trying to incorporate the best things possible so we have less grass in the newest design but we still incorporate some of the existing zero scaping and have included more landscape mulch areas we've changed some of the vegetation uh, the pathway landscape is actually going to be paving stones the central area will be mostly concrete um, and uh, what else we do uh, we may incorporate some paving zones if it works out into the the central um, little courtyard area that we made as well um, there isn't much of a price difference between the using the two products but why I'm why I'm here at council today is to get council's direction on what we want to put as a central park feature and we've given three options um, that we've looked into or thought of and 
set and what was uh, and from some of the comments that we received um, that if we still want a fountain type one option would be going with basalt uh, columns gurglers so they're basically drilled water just pours out of them they just kind of just pour out basically we're not shooting water up in fountains the other the other idea was having a sculpture with some seasonal plantings or just the third option was just putting in seasonal plantings every year and you could create different colors and different designs if you wanted and the other the other thing that's come up a few times to me is you know what are we going to name this park are we going to keep an, the old name Centennial Park or do you want to consider Bridge Park River Park or some other option but I think we should give it a name because everybody's calling it different things um, and and right now staff really don't have any favorite <coughs> recommendation for either of those two questions we have um, over the over time um, if we if council does decide on the park feature I mean the additional costs were noted in the in the report which is approximately thirty five thousand dollars and there's a little more maintenance to having a water feature of course um, sculpture that can range and it could vary depending what council would want to see in that middle or it could even be changed out over time but um, that could be an added cost over the years or you just keep one sculpture in there and that could be 10,000, 20,000, whatever we wanted to put in there. Um, and seasonal plantings, well, that's pretty, pretty negligible, really. It's just part of the park operation budget. We would order flowers or seasonal plants and uh, put that in the middle. So the total cost of the project without any central features right now is estimated to be 156,000 with contingency built in. And then depending on what council chooses, that's obviously gonna go up probably to the 200,000 if a water feature is picked. And that was our best estimate. We'll really know what the, the final cost is once we put it out the tender and get some dates back. Um, we still don't have all the quantities yet because we're waiting to see what what some of the decisions are going to be made tonight. So um, I think that's about it. If anybody has any questions, the the, the center feature where the sculpture is going to go. Could you tender this out without that piece being defined? If if the, if the decision was say not to put any water feature in there. Yeah, we, we could do that, but the only thing is, if it's gonna if there's gonna be a water feature, we need to get all the piping right. and everything in place prior. Or you could put it in; you don't have to use it, but it still needs to be incorporated in there because the concrete. Good question: Water feature. Where would be using? Where would the water be? Uh, we do have a from the town water system. So well, what? It would, it would be well water. It would just go and be spilled. It would, yeah, it would get regurgitated, right? Like it, it would just, it would be spilling over the. It'd be recirculated. It'd be recirculated. Yeah. Also, there'd be a tank installed. And then just yeah, go. I mean that's why we need to know now whether to incorporate it or not because there is piping involved and a lot more involved to the yeah, I was final design. I know, I know the, the water feature across the way when when they first applied to the town to. to that in we kind of said well we'll let you use it you know basically the water and then a year later we'll look at that to recirculate water and that never happened so it's just wasted water so I don't I don't want to see the same thing happening on this side because we're trying to conserve water I, I remember that discussion they said well you know a year from now you may have to come back to council and look at recirculating that water but I don't think that's ever happened well we're we're looking at definitely recirculating as much as we can and you just add as needed Same. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. The, with respect to the comment that was made by Water Councillor Michelle, it is in the DCCs to incorporate, uh, using some of the funds from our DCCs to have recirculation at the uh, Splash Park. So it just took a little longer than a year. 
It's, well, they're, I don't remember they're going to come back the next year. Yeah, like but it is listed within the DCC, so yeah. DCCs can be used towards uh, putting in the recirculation uh, equipment. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to throw some comments out there, um, just on your suggestions. Personally, I don't, I don't agree with a water feature there. I haven't looked after water features on a couple of sites in the city of Kelowna. I just find them to be an operational nightmare. They sound like a great idea, but I'm not so excited about that. The reason I was asking about the sculpture area there, I thought it might be if we can tender that out without that sculpture being identified. I thought it might be interesting to maybe have an opportunity to work with the SOEC need band and look for some kind of art work that could go in there. We do have a opportunity to have a joint meeting with them in May, and that could be part of a discussion that comes up at that point in time. Um, and seasonal, I guess I'm kind of iffy on that. Uh, kind of thinking some kind of zero scape, so you don't have to go and plant them every year and all the work associated with that. Um, and as far as naming the park, I, I again, I, would, I don't agree that it, personally that it should be Centennial Park. It should be something new. Mm -hmm. What the process is to find a name for that park, maybe we could have some further discussion about that. I'm not sure that Bridge Park or River Park jumps out at me as top notch. No, but I don't. I, I agree. I, I it, those are the ones that have been yeah, kind of I thrown out to staff. So if far. we were to get the Asuka's Indian Band involved with the, with the sculpture there. Some of the stuff they put outside of in, like in West Bank, where they have that elk there. Uh, it's pretty amazing stuff that can be generated out of there. So I'm just throwing that out there for discussion. That's kind of where my mind's going. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll throw mine out and to, um, I kind of like, I, I kind of like the water, uh, I kind of like the water sculpture idea, but I don't, I don't mind uh, just a straight sculpture either. Either way, uh, the one thing I'd like to see, uh, there's only one picnic bench in that whole area. There's uh, a decent amount of seating. Apparently there's gonna be seating all the way around the central feature, is that right, Sean? Uh, yeah, it covers uh, at least half. Like it'd be around each each end. There's quite and, a the, and there's yeah. bu there's bicycle parking and lockup, whatever, but I, I would like to see at least one, if not two more, uh, picnic tables incorporated somewhere into the plan. And uh, yeah, bridge, bridge, river, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. I don't like Centennial Park. It's not Centennial Park. Uh, no, <laughs> you can say Jack, Jack's Park, but no, we won't do that. Sure. Um, so some of my comments have already been said. Um, I, I liked the idea of the water feature. I liked those um, basalt er, columns. columns. Uh, but I did wonder when looking at that where the idea of the salmon went because that was something that was tossed around before somehow incorporating a sculpture with the Seuss Indian Man um, and somehow maybe incorporating the river usage of the river and the history of the river, which brings that up to maybe River Park. Um, so I think we need to spend more time on that specifically. Um, I like the general layout, um, more or less, but then I was also going to make the, a similar comment to Council Schwarzenberger that um, we definitely, I thought, talked about having making gathering places for people, which that center area definitely does. I think that's going to be fabulous, but just a couple of random benches along the path. I mean, they're useful if you get hot and you need to sit down, but they don't entice you to come and gather and, you know, sit with your friends for half an hour and chat or play cards or whatever. Um, and then I also thought that the one lonely picnic table looked a little bit sad. Um, but it's hard to tell from the drawing because I didn't go to the trouble of looking up what all of those trees are. So it's hard for me to tell if those, um, if that seating is going to have a bit of shade around it or not because that's the other thing. If we're trying to get people to use them in the summer, we should be putting the seating where there's a bit of shade so they're not wide out in the open. 
I can answer some of those questions. Yes, the, you can see that it's hard to see, but that green, mm -hmm. there'll be larger trees planted. Mm -hmm. And this is south, right? So yeah. eventually, they won't have shade yeah, for a while. Be They're going to be smaller caliper trees, but in time, the, there'll be a shady area. Yeah, I guess the point like the of the, the um, benches along the path, whether that's the best spot for them or not, and then the table, that one, or maybe a few more. Just making sure that wherever they're put, yeah, it's going to take a few years, but there's something planted close enough by that as it fills out, it yeah. starts to provide shade for that area. Yeah, and to answer like the benches, well, the town people do like donating benches to the town or even tables, or so we may not necessarily put benches in right away, but there's a spot for people to donate in the future and put benches, but if we create an area for it. Um, we can easily put another table in anywhere if we need to. It's, that's easy enough, right? Council or two is. tables. Or Absolutely. Uh, open. Uh, my questions are, I'll start out probably a little more technical. Are we buying the fill? Or are we getting that from our own school? We got a lot of fill in our public works yard that we want to get rid of. <coughs> I was suggest, and that helps us clean out our yard. And I was also going to suggest there is fill at the airport if you look how the hangar is yeah. now being built, there's excess there. But, but the airport does need some fill well, for yeah. the yeah. runway, so I'm going to keep it on. Yeah. Um, next technical thing was is I would suggest spinning me. I, I visualize this, and I, I may be wrong. I see this as a flow through. I see some people stopping in the park, but primarily it will be a flow through park. And when I look at the flow through of this park, the traffic will primarily, not that it will come from the south, but the traffic will come from the north on the bike path, into the park, through the park, towards the downtown. If the people are coming from the south and going to the downtown, they will quite likely just be going on the existing sidewalk, okay? On the bicycle path, mm -hmm. okay? So I would suggest considering spinning that pinwheel in the middle so that your entrances and exits move. So you'd, you'd like to see more so that, on that, that way and then more so this way? Exactly, because that when you think about the natural flow of traffic, what you're going to have is people beating a path across the lawn. Much the same as we saw at the Kinman Park just across the way where we spent money putting in the bricks because people, they don't go all the way around on the sidewalk, they go through the natural path. And if you look at the natural path of this park, if you're going through it on the way to downtown, the entrance and exit into that central feature are in the wrong spot. Just throw that out. Okay. Yeah, I think we did talk about that before too. You know, you've got to think about your traffic flow here. Well, before it was a lot more windy, we straightened it out a bit more, but it, that can be easily tweaked. I would a bit. think tweak it, yeah. Uh, I, again, um, I think we have a water feature across the street. I'm not sure that we need a second water feature, uh, not to the tune of, this park originally started at, I believe it was around the 60,000 ore mark, and now we're up to the 200,000 ore mark. That concerns me a little bit. I, way back in the beginning, way, way back. It's okay, Sean, you don't have to defend. Okay, the, the 60 minute okay. Okay. But um, it's, it, I'm not sure I would much rather take the approach of, yes, build the round in the center, but, what we do with it at this point, I'm not sure. We can always, um, you're going to be running pipes because you've got a lot of grass there anyways. So it's easy enough to run water and electricity to that center area so that if we ever decided to change it, we just lift the pavers because apparently you're going to be using pavers. Concrete. Central area is concrete, so you do have to run some, but we can run some piping in and out of that central yeah, feature. You run feature. Yeah. yeah, and then we could figure that out where if, it is. If yeah, easily the council doesn't decide on the water. Um, but that's again, I, I, it's more the dollars and cents, and I'm not. In, I'm more of the let's get a sculpture with the old idea as opposed to a water feature, if that's possible, and <coughs> take it from there. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, yeah, as zero maintenance as much as possible. All of our parks cost us money. Um, 
else, Ms. Bell? I'm just wondering, uh, uh, so part of the original conversation as well, and I just may have missed it along the way, we were talking about providing some sort of access from the hotel parking lot back on the theme of people take the path of least resistance. So right now through that rock garden area that we're not changing, the front left-hand corner, there is a path there that goes right, on, right to the library. And then we were talking about putting something that would Right. Uh, did, we just, did we drop that intentionally somewhere along the line? Or we dropped it because there's no dedicated pathway spot, and if people there's all parking stalls along there, okay. and if people get out of their car, they're not going to walk over to the pathway. They're going to go. It's going to go through. Be at the same height. Well, it's going to be close to the same height. It's going to be closer to the same height in that area, <laughs> and maybe a little bit lower down the end. That's just because of the existing zero escaping that we're working around. Okay. And the but we're not putting a, a buffer of like shrubs or something. Well there are shrubs there and stuff but it's if the people can walk through them. It's not a straight strip, it's not like a hedge line or anything like that. Pardon? It's not a hedge line separating No, it. it's not there's there there are spaces for people to walk through. Um, if there was a dedicated spot I mean, some people would use that, but other people, if they were parking in the hotel to use this park for whatever reason, they would probably just get out of their car and just walk. No, more like leaving the hotel to go to the ball tournament or something like that. That's yeah. Cool. And, and then I just was wondering if we had, there's, we've had this, these, so many of these conversations, I just can't, couldn't remember if we dropped it on purpose or if it just got missed. You know, that, that almost leads back to that over time they will define the entrance off the parking lot just by what gets used. And, and then, then we and could another thought that I had like actually that. was on the river's edge of the park. You you almost need two entrances on the wheel. One for exactly what you're talking about, people coming out of the hotel and going to the ball diamonds, walking to that corner at the bridge, and people coming from the north. You know, the, the, there's two kind of distinct entrances, but traffic will define itself. People don't use pathways. Unless you put them in exactly the right spot. See you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to remind everyone that on the other side of the hotel, we have a pathway going to the pathway as well. From Station Street, it goes right down over to the um, walking pathway. So there is another pathway out of that hotel as well. Mary um, it's just I don't see there any lighting in the park. Unless I'm missing it, is it is that intentional? Um, lighting never came came if we're gonna, up. If we're, we're going to put a sculpture in there, I think it would be. You know, like if it's not a water feature, we put a sculpture. It'd be nice to have that. That is a good point. Yeah. So we would we would have to incorporate some lighting into that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. I mean, if you do put a sculpture in there, you you'd want some lighting. Um. Is there any thought of fencing that um, north edge between the hotel and the park? Fencing? That? Forcing the traffic? Forcing the traffic either way. Um, that, I mean, that could be done. You could put a low, <laughs> low line fence and then create a, a little pathway. Uh, but, but again, they don't have a dedicated stall. We'd have to talk to them. Ha hatch out a, a Parking stall, well, or or you don't give them that option. They they go on the back side of the hotel, go onto the hike and bike, and go from there. I mean, they're where the where their breakfast area is. There's a back place that opens out onto a uh, yeah. mm -hmm. onto a patio there. And but it's all fenced along the river. Yes, it is that. Yeah. And close to that area, if they walk down, there's the pathway with the gate that goes out onto the path, onto the walking path. Thank you. Thank you. Just had a couple of comments. I think most of them have been said already, um, but I would agree that at, at least you know one or two more picnic tables would be really nice. And I know personally, I cut through there all the time, like coming down the hill through the parking lot. So I think that it would have to be either one or the other, having a, a dedicated pathway through that area of, of landscaping there to get to the path or to block it so people can't, because otherwise people are just going to make their own. Well, maybe 
let's say, define where their own is, and then we can go back and build a formal plan in that spot. We could, we don't want to. Um, and then my only other comment was um, I would echo the preference to have a road, um, having a local indigenous artist sculpture in there. I think would be really nice, or at least something coming from our local arts community. Um, and then perhaps we can look to them for a name as well for the park. Well, that's good for them. Is it too late to put something in our survey to ask people's opinion regarding for a name? The citizen survey? Yes. No, it's not too late. Mm -hmm. That was the problem. Yeah, we don't have to decide on it. Okay. This is part of the domain. Yeah, for now. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, Sean, when, when do you want to, when do you want these answers back? <laughs> As soon as possible, because then we can just keep <laughs> plugging away at things. I mean, a lot of this is this is staff so far, but I may I may have to get some consultants involved with some of the little finicky the finicky things, um, like the concrete design and uh, and the electrical. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, as soon as possible helps us. Otherwise, it just drags it out longer. But so what are you looking for? Well, I'd like to know what the feature was because if it was going to be oh, with the sculpture, yeah, okay. if it was going to be water, um, then you've got to plumb it and you've got to no. create. Oh. And if it's not going to be water, well, that's easier. Um, but yeah, incorporating lighting, yeah, that's that's a good point that was brought up. Yeah, I agree. See you. Sure. Um, Diane, just uh, you know, I sent me a little note here saying that perhaps the naming of the park can go through like a contest of, from the community <laughs> to get a uh, park name. We can do what Summerland did, didn't they have a big committee and a big thing and then they named their park the Summerland Skate Room Park? <laughs> <laughs> So oh, maybe they start with like five options to choose from rather than yeah. just a blank well, yeah. slate of things. Sean's smart yeah, options. That's a really good idea. It's kind of fun. Very good. The only thing I would say about naming the park, and you need to identify what that feature is going to be, what sculpture it's going to be, because that's going to drive the name. It's it's part part sense part. Sense. It might be fine if you put sound, which is kind of a cool idea for sure. Can you move ahead with what we've given you saying that? There's a cement platform there with no sculpture on it at this point. Well, the the middle, yeah, I like the, yeah. the middle won't be necessarily all concrete yeah. for that. But uh, we can move forward if if council wishes to have a sculpture in the future, and then we can incorporate some plantings too with that. Yeah. Um, that would give us go ahead to. I mean, at this not point, worrying about water. At this point, you could work on the basis of building the pathways and having dirt in the center of that with power going yeah. in there, yeah. and then yeah. come back later and put in flowers and sculptures and whatever the heck you want in that. Your sculpture. That well, that can be put in at any time. Yeah, yeah, yeah afterwards. Exactly. Yeah, that the whole park could get built basically without that. Without that, and then. We can figure that so out months, that months down the road. Yeah, is I can get going. Can move ahead then? Yeah, I can get going on that if that's what council wishes. Well, we totally nix the idea of a water feature. Then, so I like to get a water feature. Um, and there's no reason you can't incorporate the water feature and the sculpture together. Again, you can run a water pipe there and just until we figure it out, the water pipe is there. Especially if you're putting up that. Well, if we don't put in a different. Well, if you're not putting, you're not going to fill the center with concrete. It's just going to remain dirt until you either a put in a water feature or a sculpture. Yeah, the whole circle around. The the circle around will be concrete. So you have to. Yeah. See so you. the water pipe. The um, it's just not about the water pipe itself. You have to have the recirculation equipment in there too. Well, I understand that, but that recirculation equipment requires a hole in the circle. As long as you have the power and the water there, it fits into the ground. As long as you have piping going in there, you can incorporate. Yeah. You'd, have to, you'd have to do a bunch of work afterwards. Recycle the water all the way through. It goes down into the river rock. It drains in the ground. The recirculation. Water pipe that feeds in. That could be built into the center area. Okay. 
Yeah, as long as you have all the piping. As long as you've got a pipe, as long as you've got a water supply going underneath. Okay. Good. So. so, if I may, um, Sean, can you incorporate a, at least one, but probably two more picnic areas into your plan and then oh, yeah. that's, change the spoke the way uh, yeah. Councillor Mattis had noted? And then Name that baby later. <laughs> yeah. No, I've already made notes on those. If we want to incorporate more tables, um, and then reroute the pathway to more to what people would actually walk. Um, yeah, I, I know what exactly what counselor. You know, yeah. Think about yeah. <laughs> what what do people do, right? Yeah, they do. They do. They they cut across and. Yeah. Well, and just when we're looking at. Seems silly because we're dragging it on and on and on and on. Doesn't seem that like it should be that complicated, really. But when we talked about the seating originally, one of the points that I made. So just when we're thinking about where to <coughs> add maybe more seating, is that we create these areas that aren't really very useful. Like yes, somebody wants to put a bench in, and somebody might stop and sit there if they need a little break on the walk. But it's not like conducive to you and me going out for a walk and we sit and chat looking at each other like this for a half an hour before we move on. So there are many people in our community that, I mean, they like a, a part of their lifestyle is to go out in the evening, go for a walk, sit in a group, chat, and then, you know, move on an hour later. So creating the, like, hubs of not two benches facing each other. Like, we're, we're definitely doing, we're, it's, we're absolutely doing what I'm talking about in that center section, but intentionally creating spaces where people will gather, if that makes sense. That's and sense. that's what the courtyard, <laughs> speak my language. <laughs> yeah, that's, yes, that's, that's <laughs> my <minor> speak, yeah. <laughs> That, then that's why we created the courtyard. The, the, absolutely, that but, does it. But there's, there's other areas so where... There's so much more space where we could do it again, so that you have a couple of groups sitting there. Maybe they're playing cards at the end of the are day. You what they're doing. Are you suggesting two? I'm not suggesting two courtyards. I'm okay. Just more, just to gather. Chris was nodding. Just mm -hmm. ask him. I'll help you plan it. Okay. Okay, so have we finagled anything here that we like to read it, Chair? Okay. I, I can read it. Okay, so we have a proposed motion that Council directs staff to proceed with building the park with a central park feature that has a provision for water and lighting, light, lighting, additional picnic tables, and rerouting the main pathway, and that naming the park be completed after the inter council meeting that gives you a city of band. How about if just you say naming to be determined at a later date because we're going to put it in, we're going to put it out to the public in our uh, public survey. Survey then. Put some thoughts there. The name yeah. Of the contest. The name of the park. And that are ways that we can get. And it. and I mean, there's many parks around, especially in the Soyuz and other places that have. The English name or the English name and then a Silix name underneath it, and that could incorporate uh, the Soyuz Indian Band as well and still have both names on a sign for the park. Jumping fish. It also could just be a sign, you know, like a name child for six months. What bond is that? Do we have a number? Burger a second. Here's your handsome. Any discussion? Um, all in favor? Proposed? Motion carries. Okay. Moving on, item F2 review of fencing regulation zoning bylaw 1380, and I'll refer the item to the CAO. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to seek direction from the council with regard to proposed amendments to the regulations containing, contained within the zoning bylaw 1380 governing the placement of fences on retaining walls. Uh, I will pass this over to Mr. Garish and he will um, 
put you through um, the issues at hand. Sorry, I'm just, gonna, I'm just waiting for my um, okay. PowerPoint. I'm here. trying really hard to give me some time. Yeah. Give me time. Send it to me. Sorry. I just didn't put you know. Pretty much. <laughs> Okay, so um, sorry. Okay, so fences and retaining walls, um, discussion paper, seeking direction from council. Um, this is an issue that was flagged uh, by the building inspector in relation to a recent um, situation or scenario uh, that he came across, uh, and what the zoning bylaw doesn't. Does, does and doesn't allow in relation to this particular property. So we brought this forward, and I'm just going to start um, with a quick overview of what the zoning bylaw currently says uh, in relation to fences, um, which is basically nothing in relation to retaining walls. It doesn't really contemplate fences on top of retaining walls. It sets the maximum height of a fence at 1.8 meters on all boundaries except within the front setback, uh, in which case it drops down to 1.2, and that's generally for um, streetscape issues, uh, allowing for surveillance from houses and two houses, etc. Um, and then also when determining the height of the fence, um, the bylaw requires that you take an average of the land on either side of the fence. Um, so I've tried to put, and I appreciate this might be a bit busy in terms of text, but I'll try to go through it. So I've tried to put together a, a diagram that shows the challenge that this presents uh, when we're dealing with um, retaining walls and taking the average between two properties, particularly when there's a significant difference uh, between the elevation of those two properties. And so GSC is uh, government, or sorry, um, geostatic um, datum, uh, Canada, sorry, geostatic Canada datum, is playing those lines. And that's the measurements we use for the floodplain elevations, and this is just illustrative, it's not any real world example, uh, but it serves the purpose here. So um, assuming a typical retaining wall height of two meters, um, and a two meter difference between the properties, when you average that out, what happens is um, the zoning bylaw requires that you start taking your measurement uh, for the maximum fence height at the, at the midpoint of the retaining wall. So even though the bylaw suggests you can have a 1.8 meter high fence, when you're dealing with a situation like this where there's a drop in elevation between the two properties, you're not gonna get 1.8 meters because of course the average between the two results in only about uh, 0.8 of a meter fence up here. Um, and depending on the situation, I believe, I, I apologize, I wasn't able to touch base with the building inspector, I think the code might require that there be a certain level of height, uh, whereas the zoning bylaw might be saying that that height is actually less than what's required under the code, so you get that kind of uh, friction uh, occurring between the two. This is a more extreme example um, where somebody has stepped uh, retaining walls and the height difference is actually four meters. Um, what happens in these situations is that you're measuring now from, again, the midpoint of these two walls and if they're four meters, uh, what the zoning bylaw is saying is you can't actually have any fence at all um, because your 1.8 meter from the midpoint is gonna be slightly less than your higher retaining wall, which leaves us unprotected, uh, which I, 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 I can quite see or I can grant that that's a health and safety issue uh, right there. So um, to address the situation, we feel that there is an, an amendment that could be added or a new text uh, that could be added to the fence provisions in the zoning bylaw. And it's basically saying in these situations where you do have a retaining wall, um, that instead of taking the average between the two properties, uh, because we appreciate that's gonna create challenges, that with the retaining wall, that the height is actually taken from the higher abutting parcel. Um, so that you can actually put a fence on top of the retaining wall. And so this is the first diagram I showed. Um, so if the amendment went into effect or is adopted, um, it would create this difference now where the fence can actually go for the full height top of the retaining wall. Um, there's my interactive graphic. Uh, and in support of that, um, 
we feel a couple of uh, textual amendments to the definitions are required as well. Uh, sorry, as well. Um, so to clarify what is a retaining wall and when we would allow a fence on top of one, we feel that we have to define what a retaining wall is. Uh, so we've got a definition here. Um, I just wanted to flag that we're saying 1.2 meters because anything below 1.2 meters doesn't require a building permit under the code, uh, in which case we're probably not really interested, at least at the zoning level, but as soon as it does trigger the need for a building permit, so we do become interested. And the other one is we want to clarify with structure um, that we're not including retaining wall as a structure because if we were to do that, uh, we're then triggering requirements for making sure a retaining wall stays outside of the setback area, uh, that it complies with the accessory height, or sorry, the height for an accessory structure, and we don't want to also have to calculate retaining wall as part of parcel coverage. So that's why we're proposing to exclude it uh, as a structure, even though it does require a building permit inspector does consider it a structure. And that's it. Happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Council Mattis? I have one question for you, Chris. Is there any need to mention in there because of the building code and because of the height of some of these potential walls where something the effect of the, the, the fence would be um, the minimum height of the fence? <coughs> you know? I mean, because in, in, in essence, you could have a two meter wall, as you say, with, and they could choose not to put a fence. Mm -hmm. Is there something that, you know, the fence at the top of beyond 1.2 meters will be not less than that required by the building code? Um, Do we need to say anything like that? Well, we, I mean, we certainly could. I, I'm just trying to recall. I mean, I'm not, I don't, I'm not well versed in the code, but the only time I've seen or a requirement for specific fence height is in relation to swimming pools. Put a fence around the pool. They require that it's no less than 1.4 meters in height. Um, so I mean, we could sit, we could easily say on top of a retaining wall, and we could justify that on health and safety purposes that the minimum height for a fence it can't be less than 1.4 meters. Yeah, on top of it, on top of a retaining wall of yeah, you know, yeah, for the same reasons you don't want kids tumbling off, falling off, off you know, yeah. or anyone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when we we have railings too. That's a minimum requirement. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, is it 42 inches high? Or I, I don't know, I'm just remember. wondering if it needs to be mentioned in the bylaw. But there is, when there's a certain distance and a drop off, you need to have that generally. Yeah. yeah I just can't recall it. And I know the way building code probably says specific. that, and I'm just asking, do we need to specify? No, it's even just walls. Like at Rotary Beach, we have really. See you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we will confer with our building inspector, and if it's required, we will put it into the bylaw. So, I mean, yeah, you know, beyond this height, you must have. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? And we have a proposed motion that Council direct staff to include the revised fencing regulations related to retaining walls within draft amendment to bylaw 1580.7. Mayor Johansson, second. Councilor Meadows, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Moving to item F3, review of dock regulations, zoning bylaw 1380, and I'll refer the item to the CAO. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to seek direction from Council with regard to the possible regulation of docks up through zoning bylaw 1380. I will now pass it over to uh, Mr. Garish and he will bring you through the uh, document. Thank you. Um, okay, so docs. Um, first of the month this year, well actually I kind of preceded this as well. I took a call from um, a fellow at the ministry, but uh, April 1st was the formal notification date to the town of the province in issuing a um, Section 11 uh, approval for uh, changes in and about a stream, which is their language for basically seeing any works uh, within a foreshore area, whether it's a lake, pond, uh, river, etc. And that this was being um, issued in relation to the construction of a proposed dock, private dock, uh, related to an up upland residential use on Tuckalooit Lake. And the reason they felt compelled to phone, at least uh, my takeaway from the conversation was, um, they had searched their records were of the opinion that this was the first time the province had issued a dock approval on Tuckalooma Lake. And their concern was that um, this was the first, not breach in the dam, but uh, you know, once you issue one and people see it, um, they figure there will be 
<coughs> many more applications to follow. And having, they also took the time to look at the town zoning bylaw and um, couldn't see anything related to docks. And we're just querying if they were looking in the right place and if there's anything else that might apply. Because, of course, with all these letters, and I'll touch on this in a later slide, um, they always ask applicants to comply with local bylaws. Um, and so I just wanted to touch on some of the background from the province's perspective on this. Um, they've got two types of uh, permissions, uh, the general permission and the specific permission. Um, there's two ways to trigger the specific permission. One is you're on Okanagan Lake, uh, or the other is you don't meet the province's guidelines for what they consider to be a basic residential type dock. Uh, if you do meet their guidelines though, then you're qualified for a general permission. Um, and that's what this one on top of it uh, was able to obtain because it did meet all their, all their requirements that uh, it did not exceed their length, their width, uh, and it was also not to be used for commercial purposes. Um, so in situations where there's general permission, uh, they do not refer it uh, to the local government for comment. So that's why the town wasn't aware of this particular proposal until it had already been approved by the province. Um, had they exceeded these or had it been on Okanagan Lake, they would have been required to send uh, the local government a referral for comment. Um, in this particular case, uh, I believe it's a permanent dock uh, that's going in. Uh, the plans that uh, were sent to the town by the province show it to be about 9.15 meters in length. Uh, generally about 1.53 meters in width except for the end where it kind of juts out a bit. Uh, the surface area is not big, uh, it's about just under 17 square meters and it is associated with residential use. Um, of course, Takonuit is non-motorized vehicles only, so in the application to the province, the uh, property owners indicate this is for use uh, for their kayaks um, and also just for general recreational. Uh, so as I alluded to uh, just a minute ago, um, that approval did um, state at the very end in bold letters to the applicant that uh, you know, despite this approval from the province, uh, they're still required to comply with all other legislation. Fisheries Act is federal, and then I've underlined here the last part, local uh, compliance, so that would be your zoning bylaws or any other policies you may have in place. Uh, now, of course, um, with the zoning bylaw, Tucklenewit is not zoned. Uh, to the extent that you've zoned land that may, may be in Tucklenewit, it's uh, probably because of erosion. Generally, the zoning line stops at the high water mark. It uh, doesn't go beyond that. Uh, and so that's why on this picture here at the left of the slide, it's shown as white. Uh, so white, we, that's the color we apply to stuff that we haven't zoned. So you'll see that the road network is also zoned, well, not zoned white, it's just shown as white, so no zoning applies. And of course, the, the bylaw is silent uh, because of that. It's never had to think about zoning a, a water body, so there's no reference to docks or moorage. And there's no regulations to docks and more. So there's absolutely nothing in the bylaw that speaks to this situation. Uh, the best we have is council's policy from, I believe, 20 years ago, if I recall the date, 1998, 2008. Anyway, it's, it's, it's at least one decade. And that's basically that uh, any request for motorboats in Tuckleneuit uh, for special events require council approval. Of course, the federal government uh, has also prohibited motorized boats on the lake. So, you know, my takeaway from that is that basically it's the, the use of the lake is meant to be low intensity, um, but still rec for recreational purposes. So I've outlined in the report, uh, and this is where I'm seeking direction, three options that are available to council on this. Um, first one would be just the status quo, that nothing changes within the bylaw, uh, that we rely on the province um, to take care of the approval process for docks. And if we take that, that approach, of course, the province will be using their general permission guidelines, which is basically, you know, docks no longer than 42 meters in length and no wider than three meters. Uh, the second option available to council would be to regulate uh, the docks. Uh, <coughs> you could look at um, extending zoning out into the lake, um, keeping in mind, of course, that uh, part of the lake at the southeast, southeast is within the Soyuz Indian Band, so we wouldn't be able to apply to the whole of the lake. Uh, and we could articulate uh, through regulation and definition um, what types of docks <coughs> some may think is appropriate for the lake in terms of size, um, permanency, uh, et cetera. Uh, third option, uh, if council is of the opinion, would be to prohibit uh, docks outright uh, on the lake. Um, keeping in mind, there's nothing you can do about the first one that's been approved by the province that would be, or it would enjoy grandfathering rights if we went the prohibition route. Uh, but if you did want to go with option number three, again, we would have to look at putting in something into the bylaw to specifically prohibit the docks. We just couldn't rely on the existing absence of regulation to do that. Um, 
staff's position, um, not that I'm taking a middle of the road approach here, but um, I mean, I do recognize that there's environmental values with the lake that would probably speak against docks, but then you know, there are a lot of also recreational values associated with the lakes. Um, so we feel that there is benefit to having some regulation, keeping in mind that the province's general permissions, I believe at least, um, were drafted for larger lakes where you do find motorized boats and that those may not be appropriate uh, in their entirety for Tecklenburg. Um And that, you know, this could be, and then we have to flesh it out a bit more, but look at maybe limiting the size of docks that go on and also maybe potentially looking at uh, keeping them um, temporary in nature so they could be pulled out in the off season, not having them permanent. Um, but that's to be, to be decided and discussed. And my last few slides here, just uh, some quick examples, because uh, I know I referenced it textually in the, um, in the report, but I just wanted to give a couple of quick visuals how some of the other municipalities are dealing with this. So this, this particular example is from Soyuz. Um, they took a different route than some of the other municipalities. They didn't build it into their zoning bylaw, but they have their own separate uh, foreshore lake zoning bylaw. And they've extended the zones about 100 meters off their foreshore. Uh, they have four different types, depending on the adjacent upland use. So for residential, institutional, commercial, et cetera. And they limit the size of docks. They don't get into length, but they get into surface area. Uh, and they do kind of follow the province in terms of width, one and a half meters. Uh, Summerland, very similar, except there's a new zoning bylaw, three different water zones. You can see the red line uh, out in the lake as the extent of where they've gone, which is about 100 meters, I take it, uh, from their bylaws. And again, similar to so I used to have a specific WZ2 zone that they apply to privately held residential properties upland. Uh, a, sorry, Summerland has taken the approach of um, basically relying on the general permission guidelines, which for them is easy because of course Okanagan Lake is a specific uh, permission lake. So they're gonna see all referrals anyway, provide comment. And West Kelowna, I just threw in because I was a little, uh, after looking at the Soyuz and Summerland only going 100 meters, I was a little surprised to see how far out um, West Kelowna's gone. They've basically taken it to the municipal municipal boundary within the lake. So the red line at the far right uh, is the zone boundary for their main water zone. And that blue is not water. That light blue is actually the, the color of this, the zone itself. And you can see there's an exception here where they have a different water zone protruding out. Um, and I believe this might also be a different water zone, I'm not sure. So again, very similar um, private docks, regulations, one per parcel, uh, et cetera. So that's just some context. And so next steps, depending on council's direction, if it's status quo, basically no action would be required. But if you were to choose to regulate or prohibit, um, I believe we'd be looking at drafting regulations, notifying affected property owners, and then circulating any proposed regulations for public input before coming back to council for, I guess, more direction. So that's my presentation. Happy to answer any questions to the best of my ability. <coughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess when I read this, I was surprised to see that this is the first time that um, an application for a dock has gone forward. And I'm not. I'm assuming there's other ones on the lake. I'm not on there very often. They must just be small and like uh, removable, like you said. Um, or maybe these are the first people that have just gone to the trouble of actually making an application that they were supposed to make. But in any event. Um, whomever contacted you from the province is probably right. Once you see one, then the floodgate starts open and 42 meters seems to be That's really, cool. really big <laughs> for our tiny little lake. Um, so I think that it would be wise of us to come up with our own regulations um, and work through that process probably pretty quickly. I mean, which I guess my, the app, my addition to that would be the charm of that lake is, I mean, it's not for us, so what people use it for, they use it for kayaking, as these people will, they use it for travel boarding. Um, but if you're going around and going like this, that kind of mm -hmm. loses its charm. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, had a light mind, I thought 42 meters, but I did my calculations because I'm old, that's 130 feet, and that's a big honking dog, so. I would say we have to regulate um, specifically length more than anything else. But also, um, it, the one that 
is being approved. Is that uh, is that permanent or does that come out in the winter time? I believe it's permanent. Council Mathis. Um, tend to agree. The only thing I would add is is that if we do move ahead with direction to come up with regulations, is that we add into that that we contact the province immediately and ask them not to approve any more docks until we have finished our process. Mm -hmm. We've seen this before with filling in riparian areas and when the window was open, people would apply in a hurry, jump in, mm -hmm. jump in and get theirs in before the regulations come. Um, I, I would echo Councilor Mathis's comments. Um, Staff be directed to proceed with regulations governing docks on Tuckle and I don't Sorry. know if you need to part in there about contacting the province. I, I, I don't think so. Great thing. I just, I just put it up. Oh, great. No. Coming up, I did that. Uh, That's exactly what I would want.